Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for inviting me here. For us, it's a, a true honor to present our office. And it means that we're doing good things back home. I'd like to believe, too, that uh, oh, I hope that our humble and small contribution to the beam industry, it pushes forward um, the beam industry in our country and in our region. Um, well, my name is Diego Rosso. I'm an architect, and I'm uh, the director of Aerosol Architects. Uh, it's an office based in Santiago, Chile. And uh, it specializes in large-scale uh, residential and office buildings. Uh, what I'd like to share with you here uh, is a story of change and transformation. Uh, I think you saw a picture similar to this one in the morning. Uh, but it's a, a story of, a, uh, of the process of how our office migrated from a 2D traditional workflow to become the architecture office with the largest amount of Archigat licenses in Chile in a short period of time, 1.5 years. So um, what now to see, it seems to be a very um, nice process. It was actually really tough and painful sometimes. Uh, it was rather like Kafka's description of a metamorphosis. Uh, but in a way, it began with my own personal uh, background. As mentioned before, I work at Zaha Hadid for four years. And apart from missing great designers, friends, and, and having worked in great projects, uh, what I learned most from them uh, was the fact that design always comes first. And uh, tools, or digital tools in this case, second. Um, while working there was really uh, interesting to see how many softwares were available uh, to the service of architecture. And each project has its different ways of working. We created different workflows, exporting and importing. And I believe that was probably the way in which we were able to achieve that level of complexity. Um, well, eventually I went back to Chile and I started working at ASL Architects uh, as a design consultant first. And my mission there was try to uh, push as much as was possible the designs of the office. Uh, ASL Architect is an office with 60 years of experience. It was founded uh, by the architect and entrepreneur Abraham Sennerman and it has a strategic uh, relationship or association with Sencorp which is a real estate de development company, also founded by Abraham. This is a building, for example, of the 70s that was designed in Viña del Mar. Uh, to, to show you some examples of the, the large story of the office, this is from the 65, I think this was the first one in Valparaíso. Uh, this is uh, another building in Santiago from the, from the 68. Uh, then, uh, from the 80s to 90s, uh, the office designed uh, many buildings on the uh, Riviera of the of the of the of the Rio Mapocho, and this is probably the most iconic buildings uh, the office have designed, which is a titanium tower uh, from 2010, which is its second tallest building in Santiago, and well then. The office designed these three uh, towers, which is a mixed use development with a public park and a uh, retail uh, area. So the picture you see here uh, shows more or less, I think all of the buildings you see were designed by the office in a period of uh, 30 years or so. So um, all, all those projects were designed using CAD. So, um, in order to give a little context here, Santiago is a city that has a population of 5.6 million of people. This is the sixth largest Latin American city and has had uh, a great political stability since the return of democracy and has grown rapidly over the last 40 or 30 years. And because of all that, um, <clears throat> we are facing as architects 
the problem of uh, the land. You know, there is a high competition for getting new plots. Uh, there is, therefore, the prices are increasing and uh, there is a maximization of the constructability and as well as the profit, of course. Uh, so we need to comply with strict uh, regulations and public organizations. And of course, we cannot generate extra cost for the lack of coordination. Uh, we cannot exit times, as probably everyone here has to face. But we also have to face with earthquakes which is a major issue back in Chile. And unfortunately, all uh, those constraints are leading us to a city or the current scenario in Santiago. This is not a particular area. This is spread all over Santiago. Uh, so it's a lot of repetitive building, standardization, I believe lack of innovation. And it seems that uh, there's no time to think in a better solution. So, um, you know, I came from Zaha Architects and I arrived to this company. So how to generate value in these highly complex scenarios was a main question for us. And how to incorporate more design within these constrained scenarios, as you mentioned before, was critical. So um, <clears throat> it was basically the, the, the main, the reason why, why I was in that company. So. Uh, again, uh, the butterflies. Uh, but uh, we started with the phase one, let's say, to, to put it in a chronological order. But um, when I arrived there, there was only CAD. So I couldn't do anything. So I had to buy rhinoceros and therefore grasshopper, which were tools that I had uh, more, uh, I was familiar with. So uh, with that, um, with that um, workflow, we started uh, designing this project, uh, which is uh, under construction right now and is in the intersection of two very high, uh, very important roads in Santiago. Uh, of course, we're maximizing constructability. This might be like the 98% uh, of what you can build over there. And by slicing it a little bit in Rhino, we, we were able to get this design. <clears throat> uh, is a nine-story building with a podium of two, a two-level podium of uh, 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 commercial areas. So this is Santa Maria office. I hope when you go to Santiago, you'll see it built. Uh, our phase two, uh, which was halfway through to really fly, I'd say uh, it happens something very magical, uh, something very uh, unexpected. And it was the fact that I found three licenses of ArchiCAD in the office that nobody was using. <laughs> and well, I asked why we had those licenses and somebody told me in the office that apparently a person brought a laptop that had a pirate license of ArchiCAD and he connected his laptop to the network of the office and the office was cut and he was either paying a fine or buying those three licenses. And, I, <laughs> and thankfully, <laughs> and thankfully the office bought those three licenses, but uh, they were there. So immediately I started uh, with a, a small team I gather. Uh, we started exploring the tool. I have never used ArchiCAD before. I came from the design world, uh, so, uh, and immediately as it was speaking or, you know, working very well with rhinoceros and grasshopper, it became immediately our major design tool. So as you can see there, uh, CAD was still our major production uh, tool, uh, but ArchiCAD became our major design tool. So we started using ArchiCAD as a design tool. It was very strange at the beginning, but we managed to get uh, uh, buildings that were like, as I said, we're trying to avoid repetition. And we came up with this uh, residential building, of course, maximizing constructability and profit. And the building is coming up uh, nicely and it should be done, should be ready within two, two months time. Uh, 
This is an old building. We are on the construction right now. Unfortunately, I don't have very good pictures of it, um, of the construction site, because it's going on the first floor recently. So it was a very tight uh, plot of land. So what we uh, were able to do was to work with the skin of the, of the building. So it was a sort of a kinetic um, skin that moves while you are moving on your car. And uh, the last project I want to show within this uh, workflow is this a project uh, of a high-end res residential building in Santiago. And um, again, we designed it entirely in Archicad. And uh, the, the, the apartments ranges from 400 to 600 square meters. It's quite nice. And it, it was budget to experiment with this. So this is more or less the design we came up with. Again, maximizing, it was 100% of the maximum constructability, constructability was possible to achieve. And is, uh, the construction is, in, is, is, is on the way. Uh, that's the site. And should be done by the end of this year. And um, as you can see, the surfaces on the concrete is coming up really nicely. And we're very, very happy about this project. And the phase three, which is the full conversion, um, well, it coincides with uh, my appointment, appointment as director of the office which happened about 1.5 years ago. So I had the chance and I you know, got rid of CAD and any other attempt, in Revit attempt, I have to say, that were, were attempted in the office. So ARCHICAD became now our major uh, design tool as well as our major production tool. And um, of course, it was a big investment for us in Latin America. The, uh, fees for architecture are not as high as probably are here in North America. But uh, we had to buy new computers, new licenses, and we had a big problem that our office ranges from the 85 years old, which is Abraham's age, to 21. So it's a 60 years old company. So it was really tough to really make this transformation. So thanks to the graphics of team, Patricio, I see you there. Uh, we were really, um, we felt really safe uh, in this conversion. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you very rapidly the pro some of the projects we're developing right now uh, using fully uh, the uh, Archicad tool. Uh, this is a, uh, a new civic public building uh, in the Valdivia, in the south of Chile. We're using rhinoceros, as I mentioned before. It was uh, based on uh, some old uh, constructions in the south of Chile, so we came up with this idea. I'm gonna go fast, because time is running. Uh, but this, uh, we're, we're trying to get the permits so we can move forward with this project. This is another one uh, nearby Viña del Mar, too. A hotel that we're fighting also with uh, permits to get approvals. Uh, we're expanding also, not just working in Santiago, we're, as I'm showing, we're working on different regions. This is in Puerto Montt. Uh, this is a competition we won uh, last year uh, of a building in Puerto Varas for another client. Uh, actually, I had to be in a meeting yesterday, but anyways, it wasn't possible. This is a competition we lost, unfortunately, but in the same region. Um, regulation obliged us to use those roofs. Uh, concepts uh, of projects that we didn't get but we were really good at and very fast at creating uh, concepts. And, and this is, for example, a very good project for us. This is a 170,000 square meter project, seven towers of high-end residential buildings in Santiago. Uh, we got the permit, so we hopefully start construction 
within the next two months. This uh, shopping center in Puerto Varas, also trying to expand our frontiers of uh, the typical projects we, we were doing. Uh, this is a laminated um, wood, which with the new tool will be great to use in this project. And this is a, a National Maritime Museum, uh, a 1900 building that we are renovating and converting it into a museum. So Archicad is also great at uh, reconversion projects. So, and this is the last one I want to show. This is a project that uh, we won a competition at the beginning of this year for the new Hebrew school. It's a project that we uh, team up with uh, Perkins and Will, a company from the US who specializes in this type of project. And uh, as I said before, we're trying to expand our portfolio. We feel very comfortable and very secure about the tools we're using, about the methods, the design we're getting out of this. And I'm gonna get this uh, short video that we did in um, uh, Twin Motion. So <clears throat> our office is uh, going on in a big, very big period of changes. We're restructuring the entire office. And BIM and Archicad are at the heart of this transformation because it allows us to have more collaboration, more productivity, better design, I hope. Uh, more precision, and at the end of the day, a better service for our clients. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, we're expanding our portfolio of projects. We're, we're also doing the main projects for, for Sencorp, the residential and office buildings, but at the same time, we are going to education, uh, civic and public buildings, as well as retail. Uh, and to finalize my presentation, I'd like to thank to the graphics of the team, Without them, uh, all this transformation wouldn't be possible. To Abraham for believing in me and I'm believing that this was a way to move forward and to entire office, of course, for their courage, talent and adaptability. Thank you very much.